I'm going to create a workload in one terminal where I'm pinging localhost. And now I should mention that I've actually got my uh, noisy typewriter set up because I'm used to having this. I actually like having audio feedback when I type. Uh, it, I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy it. <laughs> but we'll, we'll find out. So, it's great, you should try it. So, I'm going to start with a tool called func count, and I'm going to trace all kernel functions that contain ICMP because I've created an ICMP workload. <laughs> it's so satisfying when you hit enter. So, while tracing, it's matched a bunch of kernel functions. Now, if you're new to this and you don't understand what the kernel functions are, that's fine. It's open source, so we can look it up quickly. So I have cscope set up on the source code in another window. Hands up if you use cscope. It, it's an old source code browser. If you use a different one, that's fine. So I can look up these definitions. So I'm going to pick on, so at the bottom we had ICMP receive and then ICMP out count. Uh, let's start with this one. So now to look it up in the Linux uh, kernel source, I can see ICMP out count. It has a struct net, uh, a type as an argument. It's, it's bumping counters in SNMP. So I was counting them in the kernel, and I can actually add an interval so that I can see it every second. Okay. I can also use another tool. This is another tool I wrote where I will trace that function so I can see it being called. So I can see it's being called twice a second. And I can also see the on CPU process, ping, timestamps and other information. Now I'd like to see some of the arguments. So it had a net, a struct net, and also a type. Let's print out the type. So I can print that out. That's going to be in the register per uh, SI register. I can give that a little alias to decorate the output. So type is 8 and 0. You might be wondering, how did I know it's in the SI register? It's because I've just done this far too much. But if you forget, you can look up in man syscall, which has the ABI for different processes. And down here, we've got x86.64. So I can see the first argument should be an RDI, the second argument should be an RSI, and so on. So the second argument was RSI, and printing it out, type 8, that's great. I, I believe type 8 and type 0, they're going to be ICMP echo request and reply, if I just look them up. So, okay, so here's ICMP echo reply. I just want to look at the table of macros. Oh, so good. Eight is echo request, zero is echo reply. And that's what we're, what my quick one line is showing here. So we see the eight and we see the zero because I'm pinging localhost. Kprobe has a, a bunch of options. So I can do Kprobe minus S. And I can see the stack backtraces. This is great as, oh yeah, it also does sound effects for the mouse wheel. So type 8 was the echo request, and the kernel stack backtrace is coming out of SOC send message, INET send message. So it's sending the request, and then when we do the reply, it's coming out of ICMP received. We process that. That's now ICMP echo, and away we go. We're pushing the ICMP echo reply. This stack's really interesting because it actually starts with the, since it's over localhost, TCP, the the network stack folds in on itself. So you can see how we're doing the send message, we're going to IP output, we're going into the bottom half, we're doing the driver stuff, and then we receive it again because we're the same computer. And then we go back up into the receive path. So you get to see a send path and a receive path at the same time just because I'm doing that over localhost. So that's great. So I've looked at counting it in kernel, and that's actually doing it efficiently. The, my func count is summarizing it in kernel and then doing kprobe for dynamic tracing and printing out some events. I can do some other things to this as well. So I can do func graph, so uh, ICMP out count. Func graph will trace the child calls that that function makes. So that function, I can look at the stack backtrace and that tells us how did I get there. The children calls will tell us what did it call next. So, that one's actually kind of boring because it's not doing anything, but let me pick up on one of these other ones. ICMP receive. And it's doing lots of stuff, okay? And it's also giving me some microsecond timestamps. 
as a performance engineer, that's great. I can actually I've added some switches to this so I can limit how deep it will walk. So I can say funk graph minus M2 and I can only see, uh, that might be enough if I want to drill down and find the next level. Uh, there's another tool, funk slower. I can do funk slower, ACMP receive, and it takes an argument, it will tell me if function calls exceeded that argument in microseconds. So I could say, tell me if ICMP receive ever exceeds five microseconds, and it's only printing out those instances of that. That's pretty great. And I can do other things, like, that's just ICMP. I, I picked it as a nice example this morning. Here's all of TCP. So there's lots of stuff in here. And you can imagine me picking any of these kernel functions and then looking at the source code, finding out some arguments are interesting, and I can manufacture my own tools on the fly to do any sort of deep analysis of the kernel. That's a little bit tricky if you're not, not doing kernel engineering all the time or, or this type of work all the time, which is why I create these front-end tools, things like exec snoop. So exec snoop in another window, if I type ls, and there's my ping command, it's tracing it's doing something useful. It's just tracing which commands were executed and then printing out information. So I guess ls is alias to ls color equals auto. So I have a number of these commands. It, it seems like we can do quite a lot. We've got func count, func graph, latency. I can do kernel stack backtraces. I can look at arguments. Oh, there's one thing I didn't do, which was... So this was actually uh, pretty easy where I'm just picking off the first argument. But if I go back to ICMP outcount, The, the, that was the second argument. The first argument is a struct net. So just to show you where, when things get a little bit more complicated, if I get a struct net, uh, this, this time Cscope lets me down a little because it's not matching it directly. I have to find it. So Okay, there it is at the top. So here's struct net. I may be interested in a member from struct net. So, uh, well, there's a lot of structs here, so <laughs> I'd have to go from a member to a member and keep walking, but I want to pick something simple. Let's pick if index. So, if I figure out the offset in here, um, so remember I can go man, syscall. I know that's going to be the first argument. It's going to be in RDI. I can do my K probe. I can print out RDI. Okay, I don't need the stack backtraces this time. Okay, so there's a memory address. Now, if I happen to know the offset of what I'm after, I can type it in, like offset 32, and then dereference it that way. And I can be more, and I can say, well, that's actually an unsigned eight. But it's pretty hard to look at a very big struct and just know as a human where the offsets are. Yeah. So I actually cheat this. I don't think this is documented in anywhere. So I like to borrow another tool to do that for me. So I was going to go net, and then I was going to pick on, yeah, if index. This is the perf command. Uh, this system has kernel debug info on, although I'm not using kernel debug info for any of the demos. I don't like to have it installed on my systems because they can t consume gigabytes of space. Um, I have one system at Netflix with kernel debug info on just so that I can run this one command. And what it does is it uses perf and it pretends to instrument what you give it and it tells you how it did it. So if perf probe minus n says don't do it minus v for verbose, ICP out count, give me the if index member and then it says, well, I would have got it from here. <laughs> so I log into that one machine at Netflix, I run my perf probe minus mv and then I can copy and paste that into my kprobe tool on all the production machines. And that tells me where the IF index would be. And that's how I, I, I do more complicated things by walking through members, is I just happen to have one system with kernel debug info. So that's a lot of demonstrations. Has anyone used ftrace before? Hands up if you've used ftrace. Oh, that's pretty good. We've got like maybe 10% uh, of the people. Everything I've just demonstrated here is from ftrace. Ftrace was added to the kernel in 2008. So it's been around for a long time. So nothing of, nothing of that is new. Although it might feel new if you haven't seen it before. 
And one of the problems in Linux tracing is we don't really have marketing uh, or education. So we have all these cool features in the kernel, but people don't know about them. So that's ftrace, and we've had that for a long time. I wrote a bunch of tools, perf tools, that are shell script wrappers to ftrace. They're very simple, you can read them, they're like 100 lines each. They're very simple. Most of the work you saw, all the nice things like funk graph, uh, Stephen Rastat, who's the author of ftrace, did all the hard work. So he got that going into the kernel, he's uh, the real-time, uh, the engineer who's working on the real-time kernel, and he needed a very good suite of tools to do performance analysis. So I just put wrappers on it, but Stephen Rastat did a lot of the hard work, and it's in the CS kernel, debug, tracing, it's this stuff. So you can turn on ftrace filters, and I can do k-probes and, and what, let's set up stack traces, do the function graph, and so on. That's ftrace. So going, going forward, now, the, actually one more demo I did want to do was exec snoop. I was playing around this morning to look for, for some performance issues to show you how you could uh, get value from these tools. And the first thing I noticed was when you logged into the system, there's a little pause. Even though I'm running this as a, a VBox virtual machine on my laptop, there's like a, a 100 millisecond pause from when I hit enter. And just by running exec snoop, I can see what, I found out what that was about. So it was calling uh, well, this EDC update-motd.d stuff, which is new to me. And it turns out if I copy and paste this, the, uh, the reason, so that's taking basically the 100 milliseconds. The reason why there's a little pause when I'm logging into my virtual machine was simply printing out the message of the day since it's using this new stuff. So I, I was looking at that as the first demo to do, and it's like, actually, that was just one command. So I came up with a ICMP to try instead. Now that's ftrace. I want to mention perf briefly as well. So perf started off doing things like this. Perf events can it started off as a performance monitoring counter tool, and it is great at looking at CPU cycles, instructions, IPC. It doesn't work on my virtual machine because it hasn't emulated the PMCs, but it, normally this would give you some output. Perf evolved and it can do a lot more now. So it can do software events, it can do trace point events. These are static kernel trace points. And it can also access the user, user level uh, probes as well. And so can ftrace to some degree. Uh, a, a big feature about Perf is that ftrace was developed by Stephen Rostat so that he could get his work done on the kernel. It wasn't really developed as a multi-user tool, and it's a little bit tricky to run multi-user. You can set it up with separate buffers, whereas perf was designed as the official tool so that multiple people can run it and to be very easy to use. And it supports a number of other things, like it can do user space stack backtraces, it can support additional symbol files, it can support different unwinding, lib dwarf, and so on. I use it all the time for this. So just doing a profile, so profile at 99 hertz, all CPUs, call graphs, sleep for five seconds, or 30 seconds or whatever. And that's taking time samples. And that time samples is another thing that ftrace doesn't currently do. Uh, and perf has all these things I can report, so I can turn that into a report. Uh, perf top will do this live so I can see what's on CPU, uh, consuming CPU live right now. So Perth has lots of capabilities, trace points, stack traces, and so on. And I did do a couple of tools that wrapped Perth as well as ftrace. But at this point, you might think we, we can probably do everything. Perth can do more user level and stack traces and, and simple translation. ftrace can do a million things. What can't we do? So here's a tool. So I'm just going to drop caches and then... So iosnoop prints out the disk I.O. live and times it. And so it's telling me latency for each disk I.O. and giving me some de details. Um, I wrote it a long time ago for dtrace and you find it on Mac OS X. That's great, but the way I had to implement it to do the latency timestamp is to pass it to user level and do the calculation there. And that's okay, maybe may okay for disk I.O., which is not at a 
a high frequency. Let's just do more. I length is, is summarizing it as a histogram. But that summary has to be done in the user level, so I'm passing every event to user level and doing the summarization there. That's not terribly efficient. It doesn't scale for things like scheduler events. And many times in the past, I've analyzed scheduler bugs and looked at scheduler latency. And that's what ftrace and perf events haven't historically been able to do, to do uh, custom latency calculations in kernel, to do custom histograms in kernel, and to do more programmatic capabilities. That's what BPF lets us do. So with BPF, I now have a new suite of tools, and that's what I'm talking about in this session, and that these tools can do in-kernel summaries. So I've got similar ones. Uh, here's bio latency. So I'm now doing a histogram in microseconds of the disk IO latency. Uh, don't worry too much about these warnings. Someone should fix the... Uh, my, my BPF tools use kernel headers to uh, figure out some things, and there is a, a like a lint warning right now. Someone needs to fix it because it's annoying. It prints out whenever I run my tools. So now I can run, I can code these tools efficiently because they're using BPF. Basically the same tools. So here's BioSnoop that will do the same thing. So I can see the, it's now doing latency calculation all in kernel context. Instead of passing both the start and end and letting user space do the calculation, I can now summarize it there. I can also do things, ext4 slower is another favorite tool of mine. So, so I can say, show me just ext4 operations slower than one millisecond so that I can either exonerate the file system or uh, show it had a problem. I can do uh, TCP top, so going into TCP tracing. Uh, at the moment, I just have a couple of SSH sessions. It's not very interesting. And there's lots of stuff. Uh, TTY Watcher is another favorite one. I have another window down here. That's dev PTS2. And in this window, I will say TTY Snoop dev PTS2. And now in this window, if I, whatever I type, it's, tr it's showing it in the other window. So I'm able to attach to another TTY and then just print out the same characters, which is uh, a little bit spooky. I did this before with a tool called Shell Snoop. You can actually attach my uh, TTY, TTY Snoop to Dev Console, and you can actually watch console messages live. So BCC, it, uh, BPF, it allows us to do the final things we need to do for advanced kernel tracing, to do in-kernel summaries. I've been porting a lot of my old tools over to it, and things are getting more efficient. BPF is designed to be production safe. So that was my quick demo. Two years ago, I gave a talk on ftrace, and where I introduced the perf tools. Now I'm, I am giving the talk on BPF. <laughs>